What is up, bodyweight exercise fans? In today's video, I'll be sharing with you my favorite lower body equipment free workout, but also one of my favorite anti anxiety workouts. Now, I like to do these uphill for a few reasons. Besides being more dynamic and even better to blow off steam and unwind, they're also better for strengthening the lower body and more knee and ankle friendly and overall lower body friendly since the hill shortens the distance your foot has to fall through before it hits the ground, decreasing that way the amount of shock your body has to absorb compared to flat surface sprints. Still, if you don't have sensitive lower body joints, if you're not prone to lower body injuries and or if you're still young, you can do these on a flat surface, you can do these upstairs. What I find is most important, especially when it comes to anti-anxiety purposes, is doing them in the outdoors and in as much as possible natural and green environments, which are always a lot more mentally soothing. Now, to get to the specifics, our workout consists of sprints combined with push-ups, which you'll be doing on the way back to your starting point. So you'll begin with your sprint, you'll walk a little bit, you know, to uh, drop your heart rate and somewhere about mid distance back to your starting point, you'll do a set of push-ups. Still, it is essential that we properly warm up. Keep in mind that a professional sprinter needs over an hour to warm up for a single sprint. But besides performance, what is even more important here is injury prevention, since it's very common for people to pull a hamstring or strain an ankle when they, once again, don't take their warm up seriously and get ahead of themselves. As a matter of fact, this workout's warm up takes more time than the actual workout, but still, it consists mostly of short dynamic running bursts in order to be fun and not intimidating or boring when you're already not having a great day. So, we begin with six warm up rounds that combine short bursts of running with various intensities that increase gradually, mixed with two sets of straight elbow push ups and two easy sets of regular push ups that are about half the reps you're aiming for afterwards. Straight elbow push-ups are not only a warm-up and mobility drill for our regular push-ups later on, but also a great exercise to prepare the upper body for sprinting, something a lot of us neglect since we tend to think of it solely as a lower body activity. The reality though is that during a proper sprint, all your limbs contribute to propelling yourself forward, and that is why it's not uncommon for people to experience pain in the shoulder area, for example, because of not doing anything to prep the upper body. During your first two warm-up rounds, you want to stay at about a zone two. Or for those who are not familiar with zones, pick a slow jogging pace that would allow you to chat with someone or sing without running that much out of breath. On your way back to the starting point after each sprint, somewhere midway, perform a straight elbow push-up set of eight to 12 reps using a slow and controlled tempo. Next, we continue with a 30 second burst that brings us up to about a zone three, or in simple words, a pace that will allow you to answer brief questions without that though impeding your performance. After that, again, about midway back to your starting point, do an easy set of push ups. I like to do these uphill since we're still warming up here. If you're sprinting on a flat surface, you can do these incline on something like a pavement. And the amount of reps and intensity that you're aiming for here is about half of that that we'll be aiming for later on. And during our last two warm up rounds, we're aiming for a pace similar to the pace that we'll be using during our main sprints. Finally, we finish off with two to three dynamic sprints, followed by three sets of push ups. If you feel ready at this point, you can run until technical failure, meaning running as fast as you can while maintaining a smooth and technical stride. In other words, run close to maximum speed, but always prioritize form over intensity, and also try to have a consistency in terms of performance across all rounds. So don't start too fast during your first sprint, only to run faintly during the last one. 
especially during our main sprints, we want to continue walking for another 10 to 15 seconds uphill or straight ahead to slowly catch our breath back and allow our heart to gradually return to a more restful rate instead of stopping abruptly and staying static until we feel better, which is not that good for the heart. Regarding duration, in the past I like to aim for shorter sprints of about 20 seconds, but as I grow older nowadays I find that 30 second sprints are an a lot safer option. The same goes here for push-ups, aim for a number of reps you can get consistently across all of your sets, ideally reaching technical failure during your last round. As you're walking back to the starting point, you'll notice a pleasant numbness in your body, you'll feel serene, confident, and you'll have a great sense of accomplishment. It is like a soft drug high without of course though any of the negative side effects. Besides the extra oxygen in your body, the primary suspects for the rest of these drug-like high sensations are endorphins and endocannabinoids, which are natural versions of morphine and cannabis that your body can produce. This will allow you to slow down your thought process, think more clearly, and be able to use your critical thinking skills to deal with whatever might be troubling you if you're having a rough day. Until next time, keep on training.